Welcome, everyone. Thank you for joining us for today's webinar, How to Get More Donations at Galas and Luncheons. We are pleased to have some terrific speakers today. Thank you all for joining us. A couple of quick notes before we get started. If you would like to receive the presentation sent directly to your phone right now, you can text get more. G E T M O R E, get more, all one word, um, to 51555, and we'll send you the presentation directly to your phone. We will be sending a copy of the presentation to your email as well after the webinar today, along with a link to the recording. So you'll be able to review anything you might have missed, share it with a colleague. Um, as you can see, there's the chat down the left-hand side. We will be taking uh, questions throughout the webinar, and we will hold about 15 minutes at the end of the webinar um, for a Q&A session. So we'd encourage all of you to address as many questions as you have to us via chat. Um, again, we're pleased to have all of you joining us today. Um, we've got a terrific agenda. Today, we'll be talking about the top seven secrets for successful fundraising events from the past decade. We'll go through a step-by-step -step digital setup of best practices and day of and post-event strategies for maximum donations. And as I mentioned, we'll have a Q&A session with our experts. So thanks to all of you for joining us. Um, also, if you have any audio issues with dialing in via the internet, you can choose to switch to the phone so you can listen in by phone and watch the presentation. If you'd like to switch to phone, you can do so by choosing the more button in the upper right corner of your screen and then switch to phone. So if you have any audio issues, you may want to try that. Um, again, thank you all to joining us today. We are excited for a fantastic webinar. Um, we've got three great speakers today. We've got Donna Wilkins, who's the CEO and founder of Charity Dynamics our very own Christy Knoll, who's the VP of Digital Marketing Services, along with Zanica Covington, our digital strategist. Um, so we've got a great team um, set to provide all of you with some fantastic insights about galas and luncheons and how to maximize donations during those events. Um, our webinar is going to last just about 57 more minutes or so. We'll go probably just a few minutes past the hour if we've got a lot of great questions. Um, we've got some great offers and some great um, uh, other promotions for you to take advantage of. So we'd encourage all of you to stick around all throughout the webinar. But of course, if you do miss anything, we are recording and you will get to listen and review anything you might have missed afterwards. Again, one final note, if you'd like to get the presentation sent to your phone right now, you can text get more to 51555. Without further ado, though, I would like to then introduce our first speaker. Donna Wilkins is the founder and CEO of Charity Dynamics, a full service digital marketing agency focused on leveraging technology to generate powerful results for nonprofits from concept and design through execution and analysis. Charity Dynamics works with a wide range of nonprofit organizations, including American Cancer Society, Live Strong, ALS Association, and the Human Society of the United States. I am very pleased to welcome Donna. Thanks for joining us today, Donna. Thank you so much for having me. I'm excited to talk to the group here. You know, I think this is really an interesting topic as we start looking at the intersection of events, uh, particularly luncheon and gala. You know, probably our first impression that we all think about if we were to close our eyes is everybody having a great time in the room together, really enjoying one another in that momentum. And technology is not always at the, the forefront of it, but I think it really provides the opportunity to really be able to extend the experience of the event from when you very first hear about it through going through the registration and RSVP process, day of event, and making that excitement last well beyond the event, and then with an eye towards retention for the year ahead or for a follow-on event. You know, I think the thing for us to remember is ultimately people want to come because they want to have a great time at the event. How we can use technology is building some of that excitement, giving particularly people who haven't participated in the past, an eye into what's that experience going to be like. And then, as I say, keeping that momentum going for that ongoing retention. 
I'm going to talk about a couple other tips along the way to be thinking about. First is with the giving technology. As I say, people are there to have a good time. They want to have fun. They're you know, planning on who they're going to be seeing in the room, who they're going to be catching up on. And for many, technology is not top of their mind. So we want to make it as easy as possible for technology to be able to support that fun and excitement that they're having and not be a distraction for it. And that can start from the very beginning, knowing how can we make it as easy as possible for people to either register or buy a ticket or confirm that they're going, share with others that they're going, make a donation, and then be able to share the excitement that they've experienced. And you can do that by thinking about what's your overall goal for the event, what are the ways that people are going to want to participate, and this is where I think it's really important to think about who is your audience and what is that day of participation like. So is it a luncheon where there's time at the table where I'm sitting and it's easy to be able to bring out a phone and there's a clear ask for a donation, or is it an event where there's a lot of activity, uh, but not really a focal point or a pause where there is that opportunity? Is it a group that already is constantly connected to their phone, or is it a group maybe not so much? Which is the focus? And that's going to really help guide you to how can you make it as easy as possible. You know, and also if you're using digital, uh, digital or mobile technology in ways for day of event experience, if there's anything that you can give hints to before people arrive, so if there's an application that they'll be downloading, let them know ahead of time. Let them do it before they get there. Are there things that they can be previewing through a link for an auction? Are there a, a links that they can use for pictures or other activities? Anything that you can do to make it as easy as possible for them to be prepared for using technology so they're not fumbling with downloads or trying to repeat links. Anything that they can do ahead of time is really going to help them to enjoy the experience and make technology there to support it as opposed to being a distraction from the event. Next step is thinking about cross-promotion, and this is really as you're promoting the event to your audiences and put it, putting the information out there. It's really important to think about all the different channels that you have in order to be able to reach the audience that you want to invite and have come to your event. You know, Typically on the digital side, you're going to use email, perhaps SMS, social media, direct mail, all those pieces. Key thing is, while we know all those are a little bit different, you want to make sure that that branding is consistent. So I don't want to be, as a potential attendee, looking at something that I see in social media and thinking, is that the same as that invitation that we got in the mail? That it's easy to put those together and that it all looks consistent and like one event. One of the other things to think about each of the communication channels is it typically is going to touch a slightly different demographic and also think about that the pacing is going to be a little bit different for it. So for instance, on social media, I can typically do um, an update maybe as often as every day leading up to it and throughout the early time period several times a week, whereas that's not really appropriate for email and coming into someone's email box. So think about what that pacing is that's going to be most appropriate for the channel. Again, if it's an event that has lots of different activities and audiences on it. Again, think about which demographics maybe you want to highlight that they'll be dancing at the end of the evening, music, and which may be a little bit more focused on uh, the sit-down dinner portion of the evening. And so thinking about what you want to highlight based on who the audience is. Now, as you're doing all these promotions, you're going to want to make sure that you go ahead and you use source coding, short links, landing pages, QR codes, all ways that are really going to help you be able to measure what's most effective. And I really recommend that as you're leading into the event that you pause each week and look at with the registrations that you have and the activities, what channels are working for you and which ones maybe need a tweak. Of course, there's always going to be a little bit of need for being able to look at what the timing is. Many times people need to hear about the event many times before they go ahead and accept that they're going to uh, accept the invitation and buy the ticket for it. So keep that in mind, but look at where the activity is coming from. 
Next is thinking about your table captains. And I think there's a couple of things uh, to keep in mind here and looking at is with our table captains, make sure that they're empowered and equipped to help make your event. They're really almost like extended staff for you in terms of recruiting and getting people to the event. Look at can you create toolkits for them, videos, photos, other things that they can share with the people who they want to recruit for their table, and then also think about who those table captains are. Target business leaders or person of influence and thinking about who is going to bring the right type of people to come to your event, and also having that candid conversation with the people who you're recruiting that it really is a fundraising event. So while there might be friends and family who would like to come and have a good time, can they help you by thinking about people who will want to support the organization? Another technique that I've seen successfully used is for looking at table captains, particularly repeat ones where you probably all know, who are the people who are a little bit difficult to track down and getting their table filled, and is it possible that you can help them to fill those slots? So is it someone on your staff, or can you suggest that maybe they get a family member member to help them or an assistant to help them with those tasks of getting those invites and follow-up. Next item to look at is really creating community. You know, and it used to be, if we thought back years ago, we would be saying everybody put their phones away and really encouraging people not to take their phones out. What we've all come to is really finding out that what we want to do is, at the right point, encourage people to be using their phones so that they can be helping to get the word out and share the fun and excitement. And also, Honestly, it's fun for your guests to be able to have pictures of themselves with friends and family at events as everyone's all dressed up and enjoying the, the evening or the luncheon and to be able to share those pictures. You can help by creating photo opportunities at the event. We see a great picture here where they've got a, a backdrop. And I think we see all see this at more and more events where we're actually creating places where people can take their own pictures or perhaps even providing a photographer who's there at the event. Encourage attendees to use your hashtag or also to be able to check in to the event as well. And you can help encourage that hashtag by putting it out ahead of the event as well. Next, let's think about that ask. As we all know, the reason that we're often doing these events is certainly we want to create community and the opportunity for people to connect, but generally they're fundraising events and you've typically got a specific goal that you're trying to hit in terms of the fundraising. So one, <clears throat> create an opportunity in the evening or at the luncheon or breakfast event where you're clearly focused on making the ask. You're not combining it with other things of thanking speakers or highlighting uh, other activities that are going on. You really have everyone focused on the ask. And this is a place where you can help coach with your table captains to let them know this is going to be coming and you'd like their help for it. One, be clear on making that donation. And I think at an event like this, it's important to highlight that you're really looking for donations of any kind. No one wants to be the person at the table who feels like they can't participate, and it doesn't have to mean that they're writing a $1,000 or above check. It may be that they're only in a position to do something small, but you want to make everyone feel included and have it be a positive experience of the event. If you're going to have any ways for people to be able to make donations at the event, should it be texting, writing a check, raising a hand, make sure that you're going ahead and letting people know the steps to take, particularly if you've got uh, either a, a text to give or a text to pledge or a donation form. If you can do a quick walkthrough and guide and do a demonstration of it, it makes it so much easier for people to be successful. And then plan to have people at the event who are there to help people using their devices to make those pledges or, or donations. Also, go ahead and take advantage and let your table captains and others be able to make a donation ahead of time or to ask their guests ahead of time. And then this will go ahead and it will seed that fundraising so that you're not starting there with the bottom of the thermometer, but you're already showing some momentum right away in terms of the activity coming in. And make it fun and exciting. You can go ahead and you can do shout-outs for thank you for donations, hitting particular goals. And I think the important 
important thing is to blend that early thank you and to make everyone feel included. Then thinking about donor cultivation, you know, for so many of you on the phone who I know who are running those events, it's going to be the end of the evening or lunch has finished and all you want to do is relax as you have that adrenaline crash from all the coordinating of the event. Uh, thinking about that is how do you go ahead and cultivate that audience so it's not just the event, they've gone out the door and they're forgetting about you, but how do you do that follow-up? I think there's a couple of things that you can do to make it easy to be able to continue the relationship. One is a thank you for attending and a thank you for donations. For those who've been particularly generous or depending on the size of your event, consider doing personal hand notes, and where appropriate, look at on social media, thanking some of those attendees, particularly your table captains who can help you get the word out as well too. Um, think about how you want to engage afterwards, and this is where I really urge you to have a plan well ahead of when the event is attending. So as I say, we're all feeling overwhelmed at the end of it, and the last thing we, we're necessarily thinking about are those next steps. So really plan in advance what's going to be your cultivation on the back end. Where are places where your executive director or development director are going to make phone calls to thank people for helping to make the event to success, seed those lists ahead of time so that when someone's coming in either that afternoon or the next day, they've got an easy list to work down to make that thank you. Provide them with talking points too so that they can highlight exciting things that have happened as well. With that, hopefully you're going to take your event all the way from the very beginning when you're announcing it and cultivating people to attend the event to that long-term cultivation and with an eye towards retention for next year's event. Thank you so much, and I'll hand it off to Christy now. Wonderful. And this is Chris back. So thank you so much uh, for terrific insights. Again, if everyone has questions, we're going to have a Q&A um, at the end of the webinar here. So if you have additional questions, we've got a few questions that have come in. Um, so that's terrific. So I'd encourage everyone to continue to ask us questions via chat. Um, we've got some great insight and some additional information. And I know Donna has some good resources for all of you that we'll be sharing. Um, so next up, I'd like to introduce our VP of Digital Marketing Services, Christy Knoll, who's gonna to talk to us about step-by-step -step digital setup, best practices for events. Welcome, Christy. Thank you, it is so exciting to be here today. I know that galas and luncheons are a significant fundraising event for most of you, so we are really excited and pleased to be able to help you succeed at those events and even surpass your fundraising goals. So one of the first steps is obviously setting it up for people to be able to purchase tickets or RSVP to let you know they're attending the event. And we all know you only have one chance at a first impression. So setting it up so that it is communicative, very clear to see what the event is, what the details are, and how to purchase a ticket or RSVP is really critical to get the engagement and the excitement level started from the very beginning. So you can put a video on your RSVP or ticket page to communicate your message, your story, and we're gonna, you're going to hear a lot from us about how important your story is because that's what people are connecting to emotionally. So here's an opportunity. Maybe they're doing some, they've been referred to your event. Maybe they're a longtime donor. Maybe they need to learn more or want to find out specifically what this event is about. So here's the opportunity to showcase all that you can. Uh, a video is a great way. Images are fabulous. So that's where you want to start. And then you can include logos of any sponsors. You can have a donation page linked to it so you can start collecting donations prior to the event. Get an early start. And we also have the ability to put in custom fields. So if there's any specific information you need to gather, a t-shirt size if you're handing out t-shirts, if you have any food requirements, somebody has any special needs, to, um, this is the opportunity here to set up that so you can have that ahead of time. Again, creating a very positive user experience. 
we often get asked, well, I, I'm not charging. Do I need this? But in, we would answer, absolutely, because you want to know how many people to expect, regardless of the kind of event. But you can also start gathering information from them, including their email address and their mobile number, so that you can use that to continue to communicate to them about the event or even past the event to be able to share information about your organization. Any type of registration or ticket form can be embedded and should be embedded in your website or your Facebook page, all the places that your users are going to be finding out the information, again, making it really easy for them to let you know they're coming and get the information they need. And, oh. <laughs> so if you're charging for the event, the payment is obviously a critical component because this is the first step of your fundraising. So having an easy way to pay and then let people know that the payment has been confirmed. So we can send, you'll send an email, you'll send a text, and these payment confirmations can be used in a number of ways. One is it's obviously a tax receipt, and you can customize the tax uh, information to spell that out. And if it's 100% is a tax donation, you can customize it to say that. If only a portion, a portion of the ticket is tax deductible, that should be indicated as well. But you can also use the confirmation as the ticket itself. So somebody could print out their email or show the uh, confirmation on their mobile device and use that as a way to get into your event and show that they've already RSVP'd. And you can print out a report uh, and download it if that's necessary to have a backup or for those people who maybe have forgotten uh, an email or their mobile device and it's a way to check people in uh, manually. You'll want to have a donation page and ideally you'll have that set up prior to the event. So again, you can start collecting donations prior to the event, but this is another opportunity to tell your story and with video, with imagery, we want to make it mobile friendly. And unfortunately, some organizations haven't been able to do that yet. And this is a really critical part to having a positive experience in that it looks good on a phone. We know that a majority of people are looking at things on their phones these days. So if it's responsive and it's mobile friendly, then they're going to see all the same information, be able to, it's going to be legible and be really uh, easy to work with. So starting with mobile friendly, and you want to make it easy and feel good. Uh, nobody wants to feel like it's a test that they have to pass or fail by trying to figure out your donation form. So while it's, I, I know everybody wants to get as much information as they can from every donor, we recommend that you have as few fields as possible. Just ask for what you need, which is typically their name, an email address, maybe their mobile phone number. Maybe you need a city or state, but if you don't, keep it to the minimum that is really needed so that you give everybody the reason to want to complete the donor donation form and donate and not give them a reason to either want to come back to it later or abandon it altogether because it's just requiring too much time and effort. On the donation amounts, you want to suggest donation amounts. And statistically, people will go for the middle amount or the one that's highlighted. So you want to, whatever number you want is, as the standard is what you'll put there and maybe even bump it up because people tend to pick higher amounts if those are what's offered. And on most donation pages, including ours, you can override that and put in any amount at all. So somebody can give a donation that's much higher than the suggested amounts or even lower. If, if a dollar is all that they can afford, they can type in a dollar and make that donation. So think big and offer that ability to people to donate and, and, and maybe higher than, than you're thinking even and see if you can raise the, the bar a little up higher this year for your, for your event and the donations that you're giving. Recurring gifts is a really great way to continue to have the giving throughout the year. And one way to really be successful with recurring gifts is to make it fun. Maybe give them a, a branded name or a club. Uh, make it aspirational. You could have the kids club or the presidential peak 
or the top member society or something that once they enter that, they, they, their recurring donations fall under that brand and maybe they have, get some different newsletters and stuff going forward. But the goal is to make it fun and exciting for somebody to want to continue to give uh, on an ongoing basis automatically and have, you have that revenue flow consistently. If founder towners can't make it, the donation page is a great opportunity for them to continue to be involved in the event. So if somebody can't make it or, or does live out of the area, you can make this uh, a target for them to be able to, uh, in lieu of maybe attending the event, to provide a donation. And you'll want to embed this on your website on your Facebook page, provide links through your email, uh, text, and if you have uh, print pieces, you can put a QR code on it so people can scan the QR code and easily get to this link through their mobile device. And I believe if you have a QR code on uh, an envelope, you can get a discount on your postage as well. So there are multiple reasons to use that technology. Um, very easy to use and makes it all of the ways that are available to get people to the donation page you want to take advantage of. So don't be frightened by any of the technology. You want to embrace them because the goal is to get as many people to the donation page as possible. And everybody uses different communication tools. So you want to be able to touch multiple communication tactics through social, through online, through texting, through print, so that you are touching as many people as possible. Donna did a great job of talking about the importance of table captains and getting your uh, attendance increased by bringing people in. You can use donation pages specific to table captains to help them sell tickets. And you can track those tickets directly to those table captains. So it becomes a more personal ask to fill those tables or to ask for a donation than just a, uh, the organization doing it. And often people will attend an event primarily because their friend invited them or their friend's going to be there and there's going to be a bunch of people they know. So use those table captains. Give them the branded, customized, personalized ability to invite their friends and have those friends purchase the tickets, make a donation, or become table captains themselves. And all of that can be tracked back to the one campaign, but then you can easily see the success of each of your table captains. Texting is a great communication tool. We all know that we have a, most of us have a tablet or a mobile phone with us all the time. And the open rate is around 90% for text messages, and they're usually read within 3%. So it is the easiest, fastest, most successful way to get a message in front of people. So using text messages not only as an invitation, but you can share messages leading up to the event, directions, a reminder messages, sharing the donation form or registration form ahead of time, letting people know how the fundraising is going, what the progress is, and then finishing off with a video, video thank you, or even a thank you or invitation video from the executive director asking people to come. And it doesn't have to be a high production value. Selfies are actually very well received and watched. So the executive director of your organization can take a selfie of themselves inviting people. You can put that into a text or an email and send it out and use that as a recruiting tool for your event. You can have additional forms available to capture information. Uh, you can use a, a payment form for sponsors to pay for their sponsorship ahead of time. But at the event, there's lots of ways you can use a payment form or even a questionnaire or survey, a collecting of information. So if you're having an auction or if you're selling merchandise at the event, you want to create payment forms that have a tablet or a computer or some way to have your guest use that form right there and then, and very easy 
put together the, the payment form, they can buy the merchandise, and you've already received your money before they've even left the event. You can capture information if you want to ask a survey on the way out or while they're there. Maybe you're trying to do a questionnaire to get some feedback from your community, and you can have them a couple tablets around and ask people to provide their input. Maybe if they put together the survey or they participate, you can give them some swag on the way out as an incentive. You can set up payment or surveys for if you want to golf events, sometimes they buy mulligans or you're selling raffle tickets. Maybe it's that you're asking people to vote. Maybe there's a talent show and your people are voting on their favorite act. We've had uh, stories where people have had Dancing with the Stars type uh, events and people could vote for that. So there's a lot of interesting and unique ways that you can put together a survey, a questionnaire, a payment form as part of supporting your event. The all-important fundraising thermometer, and we've been talking about that and Donna talked about it as well, that letting people know not only what your goal is, how close you're, you are to achieving it, who's participating, and how much the donations are reaching. And this is important in your event because it increases, having the thermometer accessible increases the participation in the room and often increases the amount of the donation um, by having people see this live in the event. But it goes beyond the event as well. You can share this with people who couldn't be at the event. You can text it, email it, put it on your website so people can virtually participate and see what the success of the fundraising is. Um, they can even donate from being outside of the room and see their name appear. If, you are, if there's any concerns about privacy, you can modify this to have it just be uh, names without, or numbers without names, or that people can put in anonymous. You can use it to have messages. But it is a really exciting way to share the enthusiasm and the success of the event and the participation. And that's what the goal is, is to get everybody engaged and excited about what's happening at the event. You can also use it to post messages. So if somebody can put in a, a quick, short message as part of their donation and it will appear on the, the fundraising thermometer. And you can ask them to put in, uh, you know, support their child with a name or a city or a dog's name or something as, as part of the messaging that can appear. And then finally, the, the communication which really is the start, the beginning, and the end of everything you're doing for your, for your event. You want to have as many touches as possible and using as many communication tactics as you can so that you are engaging different demographics, different psychographics, different users, and how they are typically using their types of communication. So text, email, direct mail, social media, all of these are tools that you want to use and to promote your event and your organization past the event. And we talk again about storytelling. You'll hear more about that as well from Zanica. So this is, you want to continue the, to, to tell the story, but you also want to continue to share the results of the event. So maybe you will focus on different aspects of the event and your communication leading up to. So you might break it down into different parts of the event so that you're showing an interest to, everybody's gonna to come to the event for different reasons. And if you break that into different little chunks, something's gonna to appeal to somebody. So maybe you're gonna have, one communication will be focused on the entertainment that's gonna be at the event. Another one might be the awards that will be handed out. Another communication tool might be focused on the community, the service that your organization provides. And another one might be on the fun, what they can expect at the event. And instead of sending one long communication multiple times, uh, take that same message, break it into multiple messages, and use it multiple times in multiple ways. And you might find you have 
uh, higher engagement and response. So remember, it's all about the messaging, and the storytelling starts before the event, but it continues well through the event and past the event. The ask is important, but it's not always about the ask. You want to continue the messaging so they are, your constituencies are aware of what's going on and excited about you so that when the ask comes, they're more willing to give. Back to you, Chris. Fantastic. Thank you so much. That's great stuff. And I think, uh, you know, for everyone that's in attendance, you know, it might be great before we move on real quick, just to, you know, get everyone, uh, you know, clarity on, you know, what Mobile Cause does and what your role is. So if everyone's listening, you know, ultimately all of this that she just showed you is available in Mobile Cause. So Christy, you want to tell us just a little bit about, you know, just to make us clear on your role within Mobile Cause and, and how you help people? Sure, Chris, happy to. So MobileCause is an end-to-end -end SaaS solution for fundraising and communication. We help nonprofit organizations communicate with their constituents and increase their fundraising. And the Digital Marketing Services Group, we help the nonprofit that we work with to use our tools even more effectively and provide strategy and some marketing support and, and we'll actually do some of the setup for them to to maximize our service and their results terrific and so i think i want to make it clear to everyone that all of these examples of course are absolutely available within mobile cause um, it's super easy to set up on your own but you also have this amazing team that's going to help you to actually set this up we've done it um, over and over again um, for thousands of, of events and we have helped many people raise money. And so we have the ins and outs and I just wanna make clear to everyone that's listening that all of these examples are absolutely available and have been produced using mobile cause. So, and we will get to a lot of questions. We've got some great questions. So do everyone continue to please submit your questions into the chat. We've been noting them down and we'll get to um, a Q&A session with all of our speakers today. Um, so we can directly you know, answer some of your specific questions about some of the things that you have um, heard so far in the webinar, maybe some of the things that you're working on um, individually. Um, so next up, I would like to introduce our next speaker. Uh, Zanica Covington, who's a digital strategist at Mobile Cause, again, helping numerous nonprofits uh, be successful. And she's going to talk to us about day of and post event strategies for maximum donations. Welcome, Zanica. Hi, everyone. I'm delighted to be here. So, you've done all the prep, and now you've got everyone to your event. So, what do you do next? <laughs> um, I want to go through some event sequencing and kind of uh, just give some best practices on how and when to position the all-important ask. A lot of organizations ask, um, you know, okay, now everyone's here, when, when do we do the ask? Do we do it at the end? Do we do it at the, at the beginning? And we've found, you know, there's a series of ways to be successful with the event. Um, of course, there are atypical situations where you have a walkathon, and we work with situations like that as well. But in luncheons, galas, sit-down events, um, the first thing that you want to do is obviously open with remarks, um, and then you know you thank any sponsors, um, and you thank everyone for attending. Of course, you want to thank the people that are in the room, uh, your table captains, and make sure that everyone feels very welcomed and happy to be there. Next, you might have a spokesperson uh, come up and kind of share what the organization has been up to. This is something that is important for existing donors and new donors. Believe it or not, you know, a lot of people ask about donor cultivation, and it's important to, before you even get into what you're going to be doing next, to talk about what you've been up to. So letting everyone in the room know, you know, what have you guys been doing for the last six months? Um, where did the funds from the last fundraising effort go? And kind of just give everyone a status update. This will, um, you know, help the existing donors feel like their contribution has been valued, and it will also give potential new donors the idea that you guys are moving forward and you're doing you know, important things with what the donors are giving you. 
Um, you want to have an emotional buildup. And again, storytelling is vital. Um, a lot of times organizations uh, tell an individual story and we recommend that you tell as much of an individual story as possible. So even if your organization has a wide scope and you're helping you know, children from desolate communities or you're helping uh, Syrian refugees or you're helping children with, with cancer, whatever it may be, um, we tend to disconnect slightly with overwhelming numbers. So, you know, if you say something like 500,000 people were affected by this, it's kind of hard to relate to that. And so we encourage you as much as possible to tell an individual story. If you can speak about, you know, one or a few people, it really helps uh, the audience engage uh, with the individuals and, and feel emotionally connected to to what your cause is doing. And if, you know, if you're not working with people, maybe it's animals or something like that. Again, individual stories we find are very engaging and, and easy to relate to. Next um, is the ask. And you want the ask to be positioned immediately after the emotional high point of the evening or the day. So, you know, right after you've kind of drawn the energy of the room in um, and you've told this incredible story, that's that is your best opportunity to conduct a, a successful ask. So what you'll want to do are display very clear instructions on screen as to how people can help. And what we recommend is having you know, a confident speaker up on stage, whether it's the ED or a spokesperson or whoever it may be, you want that person to be comfortable. And we highly encourage uh, you to lead by demonstration. So. Uh, you can display um, a screen that says how people can text to donate. And then really what works is, is having that person on stage do it themselves right there on stage. So they display the instruction slide and they say, all right, everybody, you know, we've all been very touched today and we would like everyone to pull out your phones and, you know, they can say, I'm doing it too. Look, I'm pulling out my phone. I want everybody to open up a new text message and you're going to direct the text message to 41444. And in the box, you're going to type in the keyword, a space, an amount. You know, no amount is too big or too small. We really accept and welcome donations of any size. Another space and your name, if you'd like to be acknowledged. And then they click send. At this point, it's a great time to display the fundraising thermometer. And ideally, the person on stage giving the instructions donation would be the first to appear. And then, you know, there's always a, oh, wow, this is amazing. It, it happens every time. And um, that's really what you want. You want people to be uh, shocked and surprised at how easy it is to, to give a donation. Um, but it doesn't stop there. You know, then you want the person on stage to say, okay, now everybody click the link on your phone. Um, it's very simple to give. Just complete this form and click submit and your donation will, will go through. And you want that to be a very clear instruction. You want it, that to take, you know, five to six minutes at least, and uh, you will immediately get an influx of donations scrolling on the thermometer. And that really builds the momentum for the thermometer to keep building up. Um, you might have people who don't have a smartphone, or they prefer to give by check or cash, and that's, that's absolutely fine. What we would encourage then is to have the table captains assist in First of all, helping people on their phones, if that's what, if, if they want help to text in but they're not quite sure how to do it, the table captains are you know, a great resource there to kind of help everyone at a specific table donate. But then you also want to um, you know, have a mechanism in place for people that want to give via check or cash. And what we recommend there is uh, the ED or whoever's on stage can instruct people you know, if you'd prefer to give by cash or check, just raise your hand and we'll have a staff member come around and collect your check and, and your cash donations. And then you can have staff people go around and collect those donations. And then, so that those people can be acknowledged in real time as well, you can actually have people on staff go ahead and enter their information into the Mobile Cause platform so that those donors that give offline donations are still acknowledged live on stage in real time. Okay, so now into a bit of strategy. Um, the thermometer is scrolling, donations are coming in, and how do you keep that momentum up? Um, a lot of organizations get kind of nervous here. I talk to them sometimes, and they're like, what if, what if the thermometer is not really scrolling? What do we do? Uh, a best practice that I recommend is 
If you've secured any donation prior to the event, maybe it's a corporate sponsor, maybe it's just a, you know, a long-time recurring donor, um, maybe, maybe hold off on having them text in their donation until the thermometer hits a bit of a lull, if it does. Or maybe you've already planned to have someone give a matching gift. Um, you can be kind of strategic about how you have that um, delivered. So, you know, 15 minutes into the ask, when you have names scrolling on screen, you could then have someone text in a contribution of $5,000. Or maybe uh, the ED comes back on stage and says, oh, wow, guys, we have someone here who's agreed to give a $10,000 matching gift. Um, and you can kind of add little tidbits throughout the ask to, to revamp it if it's hitting a bit of a lull. You can also display um, you know, contributions from ticket sales or other avenues and add those to the thermometer so that they're scrolling as well. And uh, it's nice to acknowledge people live on stage. So if someone felt confident to write their name out, um, have, have them be acknowledged. Have the ED stand up and, and shout out names and really keep that momentum building. They can call out you know, remaining totals and say, you know, we're, we're $5,000 away. Um, but you really just want to keep the momentum going. It should be a live, you know, action-packed, interactive experience. It's really fun. It's engaging. It's a great way to increase the total donors in the room and um, create a live, interactive experience for everyone that's there. And you really do want to encourage people to fulfill their donation right then and there. So as I mentioned, um, you know, first there's an instruction for them to text they receive the form on their phone, and then you really do want to encourage them to complete their gift right then and there. If they've pledged, then there shouldn't be much holding them back from completing their donation. And you can actually incentivize people to fulfill their gift right then and there. We've seen some organizations do really clever things where um, you know, maybe you have a gift bag that you give out at the end of the event or something. Maybe you can use that as a little tool to get people to fulfill their donation right away. So you can say, um, you know, if you complete your donation right now, you can take the little thank you page over to um, our staff and maybe you have someone set up with a table and then they can receive a, a, good, a gift bag on their way out. Or maybe you have, you know, t-shirts from a corporate sponsor or something like that. Um, but you can offer people, you know, little incentives to complete their donation right then and there. And the thank you page is a great, you know, confirmation page that people can show as proof of payment to receive that goodie bag. So next, what do you do with unfulfilled pledges? Um, the mobile cause system has a great mechanism in place. We actually are able to send outbound text reminders to people who pledge but maybe don't fulfill their gift on the spot. So our system is set up to send a text reminder one, four, and eight days after the initial pledge. And it says something like, you know, thank you for your pledge to our organization. We sincerely appreciate your effort and attendance at our event. Um, click here to fulfill your gift. So we do have um, a system in place, but you can also you know, go in and, and extract the donor data and send them custom messages as well. You can, um, you know, send them a thank you video for attending and then encourage them to fulfill their gift. And most importantly, um, the storytelling should not end with the event. And I used to work at a nonprofit myself, and I know from firsthand experience there's there's so much that goes into the event. You know, the staff works for, for months to prepare sometimes, and then by the time the event is done, everyone is so exhausted, they want to take a you know, two-week break and kind of unwind and, and recollect themselves before focusing on the next fundraising initiative. But really, post-event is the best opportunity you have to cultivate existing donors and also build relationships with new donors. Um, you know, your organization is fresh in everyone's minds now, so this is the best time to storytell and to keep them engaged. If you had a fundraising goal of $50,000 and whether or not you, you reached it or exceeded it, the best thing you can do is put in a plan of action for how and when you're going to use those funds to support your cause and then report outwards about it. So you can send texts, you can send emails, and just let people know, okay, with the first $10,000, you know, we're going to uh, build a new school here. We're going to build new classrooms. Or over the next three months, we're going to be sending, you know, doctors to West Africa to help with Ebola or whatever it may be. But reporting out about what, 
the donations are going towards helps people feel connected. They now feel like they are actually contributing to the betterment of society, and it really is cultivating a long-term relationship with them. You don't want to drop the ball after your event. That is the most important thing. Also, you can send, um, again, as Christy mentioned, you can send a thank you video. We find that video is, and imagery look, work very well. So um, you can send people a little video that has a, a message, a thank you message from the executive director, or maybe it has a thank you message from, from children. And it can be a selfie video, or it can be a high production video, just depending on what your resources are. And People really love to feel like they have contributed to something. So the more that you can report outwards about that, the better chance you'll have to develop long-term relationships with your donor base. Uh, with that, I'll turn it back over to you, Chris. Wonderful. Thanks, Annika. And thanks again, everyone, for all of your great questions. Um, it's Hopefully, you've gotten a lot of great insights and you've got a lot of great questions on how to actually make this happen for all of you. Um, so uh, again, you know, please do submit your questions in the chat. I've got a bunch of them so far, and we'll go ahead and dive into them. A couple of quick reminders, of course. We're going to go a couple minutes after the hour. Um, we are recording this webinar, so we will be sending out a link to watch, review, share the recorded version of the webinar along with the slides. Um, so do stand by for that. Look for that in your email. But do stick around because we've got some um, other goodies to share with you and some other insights um, to make all of this happen for you. So first up, a um, couple of questions, you know, back to Donna. Um, you know, I think, again, in the early stage of, of your presentation, you know, a couple of questions came up about, um, you know, acquiring matching donors. Any thoughts on, you know, how do you sort of, you know, maximize the matching donor strategy? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And there, there's two ways, two advantages, really, to putting this type of strategy in place. One is for those individuals sitting in the audience and hearing that there's a matching gift, they then are more compelled to make their donation now when there can be a match against it. But it's really also a great stewardship opportunity for previous donors. And many times what we see a matching gift is maybe someone who's made a significant gift in the past, say a $10,000 gift or even larger, and it's put up as a matching gift. One, you can approach those people and say, can you help us make the impact of the event even greater by letting us use this gift as a matching gift for it. But the other things that I've seen is some really interesting strategies too is almost a, a variation of crowdsourcing is having some people who are maybe lower dollar donors but are some of your most low loyal donors and asking them to be part of a matching pool. So typically for somebody maybe who every year has given you $100 for the last 10 years is to turn around and say, could we use this year's gift in a pool as a matching gift and to have them have the opportunity to be able to participate as a matching gift and be part of that and one, let them see the impact can go even further and then turn around, you've got even more dollars for matching. And then those people who are participating in doing a matching gift, ask them to help get the word out and if they're comfortable, share that they've made a matching gift and ask friends and family to consider donations. Terrific insight. And, and Nate, now related to that, uh, Christy, uh, you know, and I think, you know, a couple of questions came up, you know, just some very practical questions, you know, of during the event. If, have you seen, you know, what's your experience about if people are donating by phone, you know, phone to text during the event? You know, do contributions tend to be at lower levels than what people would give through a donation by credit card or, you know, some other means? You know, what's what's been your experience that you've seen? We have not, in fact, seen that donations are lower by the text to donate. We actually see that participation in the room goes up. We had an event where 14% of the people donated in the room. The next year, it went up to 45% because they had text to donate. And the excitement, the enthusiasm that was generated around it, seeing their name on the thermometer. So it is not a hindrance to a, a higher donation. In fact, we, we you could argue that it increases donation amounts. 
Fantastic. And now, you know, another question about that, you know, somebody asked like sort of about the table captain, you know, and maybe you could just kind of explain a little bit about what a table captain is and how to, you know, what's the best practice around that and how mobile cause supports, you know, that aspect of a live event. Chrissy, you want to take that one or I'll jump in? Sure, Donna, go for it. Uh, Okay, a table captain is really the way that I think of it is your super volunteer. They are the person who is responsible at the event for really being your host there. And we see it most often at a gala or a luncheon or a breakfast event where you're asking them to sign on as a table captain and it may be that they've purchased the table and they're responsible for filling the seats. And looking to be able to cultivate donations and introduce people to the organization. Or it can be, I've also seen, where they've agreed to be the table captain and they're actually promoting and selling those tickets to make sure that the table gets filled. And then other times I've seen where people are coming to an event and they're really being that host and ambassador and looking to engage with everyone on the table, helping to give you cues where to follow up and where people may be more interested in further conversation. Fantastic. And then, Chrissy, can you highlight with the the donor? I mean, with the uh, with the mobile cause tool, how you make it really easy to, for table captains. Anyone who's done that knows that it's a, it can actually be a fair amount of work chasing everybody down. But you've got some great ways to make it really easy on your table captains. Thanks, Anna. Yes, we can create custom pages for each table captain to be able to use to share with their friends and family to have people go onto that custom site and buy a ticket to the event or make a donation. And, and the table captain can customize it with their own picture, with their own video, their story, and really make it personal to them and why they're supporting that organization and, and, and create that emotional connection to get their family and friends to, to come to the event and, and be a part of it. Fantastic. And now, Zanica, here's a couple of questions about the thermometer. Obviously, thermometers are so critical at, you know, live events and super valuable. And, uh, you know, what are your thoughts on, uh, you know, how best to use a thermometer? Again, just I think it bears repeating, you, you know, obviously the thermometer, I think, is changing live in real time. People are seeing their names um, up there on the screen. Are there some sort of, again, best practices and, uh, you know, in terms of when to show the thermometer and how best to, um, you know, engage the live audience in, in participating at that time. Absolutely. So, again, I think it's absolutely critical that the ask immediately follows the emotional high point of the event. And, again, the emotional high point is just really when you've drilled at home that this is what we're doing, this is how you can help, and that everyone feels empowered to give then and there to, to support the cause. Right when the person on stage goes into presenting how to text to donate, you can, what we recommend is displaying an instruction slide. And Mobile Cause, we actually provide this to, to our clients. We give them um, a custom instruction slide so it can have you know, their own organization logo and everything up on stage. And we recommend showing that on the projector while the person on stage is, is telling everyone how to text in. So in addition to the person saying, everyone pull out your phones, open up a message to 41444, there will actually be an instruction slide in the background demonstrating the same thing. And then once you're certain that the person on stage has submitted their message, um, then I would feel confident to, to move the projector now to the thermometer, at which point it should be at least displaying um, the executive director or, wh or whoever conducted the ask, um, their pledge. And another thing that I forgot to mention previously is that you do not want to serve food um, around the time of the ask. And it's just because we are humans and the moment food comes out, we get distracted and we're thinking about our food. So I've seen it. I've seen the food um, come successfully on either end of the ask. I've, I've gone to events where you know, they kind of serve food right in the beginning, whether it's buffet style and people are eating during opening remarks, or uh, I would recommend doing food at least 20 minutes after uh, you do the ask. And that's, again, because 
the moment that food comes out, people kind of get distracted. So it is kind of nice to have the thermometer scrolling while people are eating, and then they can go ahead and look up um, and see you know, people getting acknowledged and stuff. But again, you just want to make sure that, that when the thermometer is going, that that's where the focal point is. And again, too, the thermometer isn't vital. It's just a great tool. We've seen it increase donations in the room by a significant amount. And um, it's just a, it's, it's a nice way to acknowledge specific people. And it's, it's fun. It's you know, nice for people to see that, that they're being acknowledged. And it just sort of you know, gamifies or enhances the whole experience. Fantastic. And now, you know, we still have a lot of questions. Um, you know, we may not be able to get to all of them. So a couple of things I would suggest to everyone that's listening and maybe has a question that they haven't answered. As you can see, the Mobile Cause team and our ecosystem of partners, including Donna, uh, you know, has a fantastic set of insight and resources, and we are here to help all of you succeed. So, of course, you know, I would encourage all of you to reach out and connect with us. Um, as a part of Mobile Cause, we have a customer success team that is extremely um, fantastic at helping all of you be successful. So if we don't get to all of your questions, uh, we'll provide some resources here and some opportunities for you to get in touch with us directly and answer, you know, get some of your specific questions answered. Um, I think just, you know, final thoughts, you know, Donna, final thoughts on anything, you know, just sort of to sum up either what your thoughts are of what you've seen is like the critical must have, like if you were to sum up like sort of one leave, leave behind for all of us, what would that be? Make it easy for people to be able to enjoy the event and get the benefit of spending their time live with friends and family supporting a mission that they're excited about. So make it easy to register, easy to buy tickets, easy to make a donation, and easy to follow up. Beautiful. And how about you, Christy? Like what, you know, thoughts, and, and I've, I know you've seen some of the comments here, you know, anything that, you know, sort of has stuck out for you that you'd like to remind everyone as a sort of best practice of, you know, one big takeaway if they were to take one away today? Well, the, focus on the message and the presentation. I think everybody can get so caught up in the logistics and the, the food and, and the seating arrangements that, what really should be the focus is what do you want to tell people? How do you want to get them involved in your organization? And how do you want them to continue to be involved, whether that's volunteering or donating? And really make sure that you are conveying that, what you do, why you're so important, why what these supporters are giving you is so important. And then the rest falls into place, especially if you as take Donna's advice and make everything easy so that it people will be really excited to be a part of your organization and be willing and wanting to continue to participate in various ways. Fantastic. And how about you, Zanica? I mean, again, maybe your take is sort of like what, what you've seen that Mobile Cause and, and the team, you know, such as you and everyone else that's there, you know, what, what's sort of the one thing you'd want to remind everyone that, you know, we can help everyone with? Like, what's, what's, what's really your primary mission in, in serving our nonprofit customers? Um, I would say, you know, as a nonprofit, you have to be, you have to be confident. And lots of times when you're, you know, relying on donor relations for, uh, donor contributions for the survival of your organization, you get a little bit uh, timid to do anything that's really, you know, forward thinking or, or super innovative. But I can't stress enough how important digital fundraising is in the overall success of a nonprofit in the 21st century. You cannot be afraid to digitalize your fundraising efforts. And there are so many ways that you can enhance the fundraising experience for so many people by, you know, syncing text messages and emails and making mobile optimized forms and really um, not being afraid to go digital. That's one. And then storytelling. You have to tell the story. And as Christy mentioned, it's very easy to get caught up with logistics and you know, table tents and arrangements and things like that. But you really have to put yourself in the donor's shoes and think, if I were to be attracted to an organization, what would attract me to them? What do I want to know? Um, and you really just want to put yourself in the donor's shoes as much as possible and think, what information do they want to receive from you? 
I think that's a great, great, great point. And so again, everyone, I would encourage all of you to reach out and connect with us to answer any more of your specific questions that we were not able to answer today. Um, I do want to um, uh, turn it over to Christy real quick, who's going to talk to you briefly about uh, an awesome opportunity um, that we're offering all of you. Christy? Great. Thanks, Chris. Yes. Yeah, so as I mentioned, dig uh, the digital marketing services team at Mobile Calls, we're here to assist any organization who's putting on an event and other types of fundraising. But with our event package, we will help you put together all these tools that we just went through. Uh, we'll, we'll set everything up. We'll give you best practices. We'll give you strategy. We'll give you uh, templates for marketing materials and promotional support of the fundraising element and really get you set up for success at your event. So uh, as, as Danica said, it's really taking everything further step into mobile, into digital, and it's a great tool to get somebody who's got an event coming up quickly or never done it on this scale to get up and running and, and, and truly be set up for success. Wonderful. And again, I think the one thing that I just want to point out there is I think you started to is that, of course, mobile cause is this is just about events, but we can support you with much more than just events. So please do, you know, engage with us on this event opportunity, um, as well as if you've got other fundraising, please do, you know, feel free to reach out to us about those as well. Um, now I'd like to turn it back to Donna, who's going to talk to you about a special opportunity from Charity Dynamics. Yes, we've got two opportunities to be able to help you in planning your events and make the most of it and your overall fundraising. Um, first off, we have our six-point checklist for making sure that you're set up to make your event mobile ready and successful. One of our experts will lead you through a checklist of how prepared you are and what the potential impact is, so you've got an internal report card to be using. Terrific. So again, everyone, this link, uh, bit.ly, bit.ly slash charity dynamics offer, you know, click through there, check it out, take advantage of it today. Um, we'd encourage all of you. And, to do so. Yeah, go ahead. Whoops, sorry. And I've got one more thing. Great. We've got a set of digital trends workshops coming up in Chicago, D.C. and New York, and we'd love to have anyone on the webinar feel free to attend and I'll be sharing a code through the chat for a free registration for it. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, and so finally, everyone, yes, a couple of quick questions here. So mobile cause again, just as a, uh, to provide everyone with clarity, we provide end to end mobile and online fundraising software for a new generation of donors and that's end to end mobile and online. So you can speak directly to a fundraising expert about your specific uh, upcoming events or anything else that you're working on, you can call us at 888-661-8804, or right now you can go to mobilecause.com slash free dash consultation. Again, that's mobilecause.com slash free dash consultation. We also provide a whole ton of resources um, on our website at mobilecause.com slash resources. Um, there's a whole library of past webinars, a lot of great infographics and ebooks. So we'd encourage all of you, if you haven't already been there, to check all of those out. And again, you've seen some of the types of value that we add beyond just the technology to help you be successful. So I'd encourage all of you to reach out to us um, again. Thank you all for attending today. Please look out for um, our next upcoming webinar. We'd love to see you again. And have a fantastic, successful gala and fundraising season. We look forward to seeing you on our next webinar. Have a great day, everyone.